Okay, I'm just checking that everything is recording fine. As you see, I am um, placing uh, recordings uh, on YouTube. Okay, so let's go back to our um, our um, assessing water resources availability deductive methods. Hmm. Here it is, and let's go to the linear reservoir which we just uh, completed. It's here. Okay, let me expand it one second. Uh, this is okay, and then and then let me check. Okay. Uh, One second, because I want to expand. Okay, here it is, the expanded version. Good. Now, first, uh, you see here I included a figure uh, related to the progress of river flow according to the linear reservoir, a progress along time with constant rainfall, and. Uh, Q0 equals 0, so initial river flow, initial condition, initial river flow, it's, it's 0. And you see that, uh, as we concluded last time, the graph starts from the origin and, uh, and goes up uh, tending asymptotically to rainfall, to rainfall intensity multiplied by catchment area. Do remember that when we say rainfall in the linear reservoir, it's rainfall it's flow of rainfall, so rainfall intensity, which is uh, in terms of units, a length over time, and the rainfall intensity is multiplied by the catchment area to get this lowercase p. Good. Now, this is a case of analytical integration. Analytical integration because uh, we said, we noted at the end of uh, last lecture that uh, the linear reservoir can be integrated, the relationship can be integrated, and therefore we can get an um, um, explicit uh, representation, explicit uh, expression for the river flow. Only we can obtain this analytical relationship only if uh, the uh, rainfall is expressed through a mathematical relationship that is tractable, where tractable means that, it's, uh, that it lends itself to analytical integration. If rainfall is constant, as we said, we obtain a tractable relationship we can integrate analytically. However, in actual application, in real world applications, rainfall is usually not assumed to be constant, because, of course, rainfall events uh, are uh, characterized by time variability and therefore analytical integration is in general not possible and uh, this is not a problem for us because uh, we resolve uh, with uh, with uh, numerical integration i think uh, it is an interesting exercise to write in r then a program that makes uh, the analytical integration the analytical integration of uh, sorry, the numerical integration of uh, the relationship that you can see here. I am highlighting on the screen. Okay, so the relationship, let me highlight only the relationship if I can. No, let me see. Uh, yeah, here, here it is. So let's try to write a R program, a R script, which integrates this analytical relationship. Actually, this is for constant rainfall. So let me let me go back to this one. This is, just one second, this is the relationship I want to integrate. Mm. And let me select it. Good. This is the one I want to integrate. Okay, so let's open our studio. If you agree, I would like to, uh, to develop this uh, by writing the script now let's open our studio and uh, system development okay here is our studio of 
first of all I have some uh, garbage here so let me let me close this script now we have the console and we have here the environment with files plots etc and uh, let's keep these two windows open for now we don't need uh, another window probably i have some variables let me see if there are some variables to be removed yeah there are some variables uh, which i used yesterday actually for for developing the script that i posted you on the chat and uh, and then let me see if i can If I can put uh, the variables uh, available, uh, just one second. Source, okay. Environment history files, plots. Uh, I think environment. Okay, this is already okay. So, yeah, here they are. Let me let me delete uh, these variables. You see, I am selecting all of them and then I am clicking on the broom here. Are you sure you want to remove an object? Yes, I want I wanted to get a clean environment. Now, if you go to the console and you write list, it's uh, there is nothing there. OK, if you have any problem to follow me as usual, write on the chat, please. OK, now uh, what we need to do is to refer to a practical case uh, and uh, we need some data because uh, if we want to perform a numerical integration we, we need to refer to an application of course uh, we need to refer to some numbers we, which uh, we will have to numerically integrate so let's see these numbers uh, and uh, let's get the practical case by going back to our our course page just one second that you get it on the screen. OK, this is the course page. Let's go down and click on exercise application of the linear reservoir rain for and off model. OK, so let's click here. And I open it in a new a new window. It's a PDF or a zip no it's a pdf okay here is the text just one second you get it perfect so it's a catchment with a given area which is 1200 square kilometers it's and um, it's a catchment with rainfall data observed at hourly time scale for a period of one year so we have one year of hourly data which means some 8000 8,000 numbers. So the related observation of mean our aerial hourly rainfall are given at this website here, but you don't need to you don't need to uh, to put it into the browser because uh, you have links uh, in the web page. Let's forget about this for now because we will go to the web page to click on the links. Besides hourly rainfall data, we have observed hourly river flows, which can be also downloaded at this web address. By the way, I need to update these links because they need to refer to my, my personal web address. This is still valid, but it shouldn't be used because, uh, because now we have the website which has a new address. Okay. So we need to assume that the runoff coefficient is equal to 0.5. Remember what is the runoff coefficient? The runoff coefficient is a reduction factor that is applied to gross rainfall to obtain net rainfall. By multiplying rainfall, gross rainfall, by the runoff coefficient, we take into account water losses, which means evapotranspiration, infiltration, whatever. OK, so this runoff coefficient is 0.5. And then uh, we need to apply the linear reservoir to start from the rainfall data to get uh, the river flow data. And uh, note the final 
the final comment in the file, which you can see here, note that evapotranspiration data are included in the above file, rainfall file, which are not necessary to apply because they are not ref, uh, necessary because we are accounting for evapotranspiration by introducing the runoff coefficient of 0.5. Okay. Okay, very good. Now we need to look at the data. So I can close this because it doesn't give any relevant information, any additional relevant information. Let's remember that the catchment area, the value, is 1214 square kilometers. And let's remember that the runoff coefficient is 0.5. Okay. Now I am closing the PDF. And now we can click on, I am back to my web page. Let's wait that you get it. Okay, and I am clicking on the link which I am selecting. Very good. I am clicking here, and if you click there, you see that there is a file, a text file. The text file is um, reporting, it has an heading, and the heading describes what the file is reporting. So the first column is hourly rainfall, and rainfall means uh, that is expressed in millimeters per hour. This should be written here. I, I'll update it. Just me, let me check if it is millimeters per hour. Yeah, I would say yes. Yes, it is millimeters per hour. So the second column is hourly evapotranspiration. As I said, we don't need it. What we need is to save this file because uh, we need to import it in R. So I suggest that you go back to the link. One second here. And what you can do is uh, instead of clicking with the left mouse button, mouse button on the link, which I am, which I am now selecting. Okay. Instead of uh, of clicking on the link, click with the right button, and then you can choose save destination with the name. Okay. And then you can save wherever you want. I am just one second. I am saving on the desktop with the name of the file rain evaposynth.txt. Okay, I am saving. Good. Now, river flow data, we need them. Just one second, I'm waiting for you to see the link. Okay, here it is. Again, right click, save destination with name, save file with name. And again, I am saving it in my desktop. Good. Let's have a look at the river flow data just to see how they are. There is an heading, river discharge in cubic meters per second. Very good. Perfect. Okay, now we can go back. Just one second. Okay, now we can go back to Art Studio. And, uh, and now we have to upload the data. So import data set. I am clicking on, uh, on uh, the window in the upper central part of the, of the screen. You click on import data set. And uh, I take it from text. And now I go to select my rain evaposynth. Okay, now we need, we need to remove the adding, so adding yes, I hope that um, it may understand, it may, it may understand that there are two lines of adding, but we need to, to check whether it's automatic, because if I put no, no, okay. Okay, let's try. I'm not really sure because I would like to say that the headings are two lines.
but I don't see any opportunity here for saying that okay and uh, let's try to upload it let's see what happens okay mm -hmm. I think uh, we should remove this not sure there is a way to remove the first line from here I am just trying to understand if you find any solution just let me know let me see so it's uh, the first line with filter I don't think it is uh, and uh, okay so i think we need to find a solution in another way and the second thing is that uh, we need to divide this columns into okay let me let me try to go to the console and resolve in the console okay so let me see what is this rain evaposynth means oh sorry let me see if it is a, a matrix or a list names okay okay so there are two columns so let me see if I'm if I write rain evaposynth column two one okay column two two and then I'll explain what I am doing just one second let me see if I okay you know I think that um, I'm not happy with the way this file was uploaded so I think we need to find another solution yeah okay let me let me delete it and let me try again from text let me see no I don't want uh, to install this uh, new let me see again otherwise I will adopt uh, the method which I usually adopting at the lectures but it's a bit of a problem in this particular case let's see I just want to see if there is a way to Encoding, encoding its heading, yes. Separator, okay, white space. And then decimal is period, okay. I think I have to identify the first uh, columns with comments. There is no other way. And then we try again. Okay, so let me we need to modify these input files in text because uh, uh, there is uh, there is the need to if we want to upload them in this way by using import data set I uh, I need to modify the input file or there is another solution which is to use a um, function from the console let's use this and uh, let's try to write it in this way uh, 
Yeah, maybe. Uh, also in Excel, it's a good idea. But uh, actually, we don't need Excel because, um, you know, Maurus suggested uh, opening, it in, opening it in Excel. We don't need Excel. Please just follow me because I think it is faster. So let's uh, try to write rain evapo, name of a variable in the console, equal to scan. Let's use the scan function. The scan function, first of all, we have to give the name of the file which uh, let, let's see if it is uh, the problem with the name of the file is that you have to find the path to me is quite easy i need i just need to write home let me write my path and then the name of the file here it is so the, the path is a problem for you. So let's wait a little bit and, and then I'll, uh, I'll tell you what is the path of your file. And, uh, and then we can write skip equal three, because if I will remember, there are three lines to be skipped and that's it. And you see that uh, it read uh, some 7520 items which is precisely 365 times 24 hourly data times 2 because there are rainfall and evapotranspiration data so we uploaded the data now the problem for you probably is the path to find the path of the file and if you save the file in the desktop i don't think it's the the best idea but you should uh, save you should set the working directory in our studio and in order to do that let me see how it's possible environment there is i i, I remember that there is a there is an option here to set the open the working directory and let me check and meanwhile let me right on the chat let me know on the chat if you are successful to to find it let me just one second tools i am sure that there is show environment no not session okay you have to look at session set working directory to source file location sorry set working directory choose directory and then you select your directory i hope uh, you understood yes in excel in excel uh, uh, the file gets three columns because uh, it depends on the separator that you gave but again i suggest you that you use the scan function so again in order to use it you have to write uh, session set working directory choose directory and uh, i think that if i do this then i can write again renewable now i don't need the full path scan file name yeah now it is automatically found good okay can you please uh, let me know in the chat within 30 seconds uh, if you experience if you are still experiencing problems if you still have problems i wait for you Good. It seems that uh, you are fine. Now let's open with the same method. Let's open the river flow data. Okay. I clear the console. River flow equal scan 
commas and I don't remember the name of the file let me see no discharge synthtxt I think it was skip equal one here good again if you have any problem please let me know We are not all set, however, because the rain file is 17,000 long. Okay, there is a question by Massimiliano. What does skip do? Skip is the number of lines that uh, you have to skip at the top of the file that you are reading and uh, I used it to skip the headings just note that uh, it is uh, RStudio it is not really flexible because it doesn't allow me to say that the heading may be, may be distributed over more than one line so I prefer to use the command scan from the console because of course it is more flexible and this uh, gives to you the feeling that even if you are using RStudio it's important that you know the console commands if you want to be very efficient it's important that you know the console commands and uh, let me make a general consideration on this RStudio it's uh, a platform that makes R more user friendly but in doing that it lowers the flexibility it is like Excel Excel it's uh, conceived to be very user-friendly but in order to be very user-friendly they had to reduce the flexibility so this is uh, an additional confirmation that uh, if we want to keep flexibility which means uh, if we want to keep efficiency then we need to know how to use the computer by programming because when I go to the console instead of using our studio basically I am programming I am moving a step towards programming okay now as I said the rain file it's twice long than needed and the reason is that there are evapotranspiration data there which we don't need so we have to extract them also Keep in mind that uh, uh, keep in mind that uh, we basically uploaded the rain data in a way that it mixes rain and uh, evapotranspiration. Let's see a couple of numbers to mean uh, to to see what I mean. If I upload the first ten if I show the first 10 data and in order to do that I type the name of the vector with uh, the two indexes uh, the two extreme indexes of the range I want to display with uh, uh, separated by the two dots what I get is look at the screen 0 0.011 and then 0, 0 0.011 it means that I have one rainfall data one evapotranspiration data one rainfall data one evapotranspiration data I have to split them and the way to split them is to create an array so let's say that rain evapo I am overwriting is equal to rain evapo sorry array rain evapo dimension equal c2 8760 this should work let's explore if it works so let me see if in column one I indeed get only rainfall data 
yes, I am fine. And in column two, I am then getting only evapotranspiration data. Good. Okay, I get, I got um, a break in the connection. I hope that, uh, I hope you didn't uh, lose anything. Okay, now if you look at the console, <coughs> we are all set with uh, the river flow. Uh, now we should discard the evapotranspiration data. We don't need them. In order to do that, let me write on the console, sorry, rain equal to rain evapo one comma. Good. Now if we check rain 110, we are all set. Perfect. At this stage I can go, I can eliminate rain evapo. I go in the right uh, window, the window of the global environment, and I click on the broom and I remove this. And let me clear the console. At this stage, uh, it is important uh, to make a check. Let's check uh, the plots uh, of rain and uh, river flow. Because, you know, when you use data, the first thing that you have to do is to check their reliability. And the best way and the most efficient way to check data reliability is to make a plot. So let's make a plot of rain and uh, with a line, a very simple plot. Okay. Just one second. Very good. Okay. So. Here is the plot. Okay. Now, um, this is one year. Let's uh, make, uh, given that I have a, a small doubt, uh, I have a doubt on the units because rainfall is usually expressed in millimeters per hour, but uh, sometimes it is also expressed in centimeters per hour. I do need to know the unit. So uh, let me make a check. And the check, the best way to check is to, to compute the sum of, uh, of the rain data, which is 1000. Now, we know that uh, at mid latitudes, uh, rainfall is uh, on average uh, one meters per year. So if uh, the sum of our rain data, which are extended over a full year, only one, a full year, it's uh, 1,077. It means that it, they are expressed indeed in millimeters because uh, it's impossible that it, it is in centimeters. You know, it would be, it would be, it would mean 10 meters of uh, rainfall, which is, which is not, uh, which is not uh, realistic. And instead, 1,000 millimeters is precisely one meter, so this is fine. Good. Let me make the check on the river flow data. Plot river. Uh, I don't remember the name. Is uh, river flow? Sorry. River flow. Uh, here it is. Type equal line. Very good. Uh, and this is uh, the river flow data, which is, uh, we know it's in cubic meters per second. So this is the plot uh, of the observed river flow data, which ideally we would like to reproduce uh, with the linear reservoir. Okay, at this stage, uh, we are ready to start uh, to create, to program the linear reservoir model. 
and in order to do that I need to open a script so I click on file oops new file r script here I am let's save it and I save it as linear reservoir dot r good and then I'm ready to start if I am too fast if I am too fast please let me know now I would suggest to write lin res linear reservoir equal function function let's create a function to make uh, the to make uh, the program of the linear reservoir and uh, let's put in the the argument rain file uh, no i don't need the rain file i think uh, rain data river flow data second uh, second uh, argument runoff coef runoff coefficient and area i think i just need these four arguments okay now the curly bracket here we are okay uh, sorry you're right because i expanded here it is I expanded the plot window but uh, we don't need the plot window now very good and also I think I can reduce the console because we don't need it now let's dedicate most of the screen to the script very good now um, first uh, let me compute net rain net rain is equal to rain data remember in, inside the function i gave the name rain data to my vector of rainfall i named it in my r console rain which means that when i will launch this function i will have to give it as first argument rain okay which is then taken by the function has rain data so let's but inside the function what i have to use is the name i gave to the argument good okay now let's go with the rain data times 0.5 no sorry not 0.5 runoff coef Good. times area because remember I need to put into the linear reservoir rainfall times area so times area the problem is that area must be given in units that are consistent with the units of the rainfall so now we have to make a transformation rain data is in millimeters so if i want to get the discharge in cubic meters per second i have to transform millimeters in meters and then i have to divide by 1000 very good runoff coefficient is a dimensional the area of the catchment is in square kilometers if it is in square kilometers then I need to, in order to transform it in meters and therefore I have to multiply times one, two, three, one, two, three, because it's uh, six zeros because it's 1000, the transformation between square kilometers, meters, 1000 square, which becomes one million. This is our net rain. This is what we have to put into the linear reservoir. Okay. And another thing, I forgot to put another argument in the function, which is k. Okay, k 
will need to be given in seconds. Good. Now, we are ready to start our computation, which needs to be a four cycle. And uh, so let's write four i in one eight seven six zero let's give the length of the cycle as a has a fixed variable actually i could put it as argument of the function so let 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 me do like this because this is a useful exercise n has an as a additional argument equal to eight seven six zero and then i can go here and write n if you yes so there is a question by massimiliano wasn't rain already millimeters rain is in millimeters but i have to transform it in meters because i want to get the discharge in cubic meters per second so everything should be transformed in meters okay now the fourth cycle first of all i need to introduce another additional variable which is storage storage it's updated at each cycle but i need to define it so let me go back and define w equals zero okay okay so what happens in our tank at our catchment at the beginning of the simulation it rains and therefore storage increases so let's say that w sorry it's equal to w plus i'm sorry i am okay w equal w plus plus what plus rainfall so plus net rain with the index i because it's the net rain at each time step hmm, times the time step because uh, uh, be careful rain it's expressed in terms of flow of rain which means uh, in terms of units length cube divided by seconds okay hmm? because if you look at how net rain was computed i multiply rain intensity length divided by time i multiply it by catchment area so i obtain a volume divided by time now the storage is a volume length cube is a volume so in order to get the storage that rain originates at each time step i need to multiply net rain by the time step what is the time step in seconds it's one hour which means three thirty six hundred seconds let's put this time step between the arguments of the function time step equal let's give a default value 3600 good and then here i have to multiply by time step perfect so this is the storage originated by rainfall but at the same time precisely at the same time we have the river flow which is coming out from the catchment coming out from the tank and we need to compute it we remember that the river flow is equal to storage divided by k so let's write q river flow at time i Ha, huh. here I realize that I need to define the vector Q. So, go back here. Q is equal to rep 0 N. Okay, 
I can go down, QI, and uh, sorry, I, I also W is a vector, I forgot this. So let me define W in the same way, rep. I'm sorry. 0 n and let me correct this uh, here I needed a square um, round parenthesis not square sorry I give you some time to correct uh, along with uh, what I'm doing another correction w is a vector so let's put here w i Yeah, which is equal to storage at the previous time interval plus net train times time step. Good. Everything is clear. There is one more thing to say, given that uh, the storage is summed to the storage at the previous time step, we cannot start our four cycle from one, we need to start it from two, because otherwise uh, this variable at time one is not defined, because it will look at time zero, which is which is not correct. Let's start from time step two. Vectors in R cannot take index zero. Index should start from one. Okay. Any, any comment on this? Because I, I had to go back and forth. You know, I am I am uh, building the script from scratch, so you have to be patient with me. I think it is more useful with respect to giving to you a script that is already written. On the other hand, of course, uh, we need to be very interactive in this. If you maybe that I am doing some mistakes, if you see that I am doing some mistakes, please stop me. Or if you see that something can be optimized, stop me. Okay, I'm just waiting a little bit for your questions, if any. Give me just one second because I need to have a look uh, at the email once in a while because news are coming very quickly. Okay. Okay, so I, it looks like you don't have any, any question. Now, let's compute QI. QI is equal to WI divided by K. Good. Now, we need uh, an additional instruction because uh, QI is subtracting some storage from the catchment. So we need to compute the new value. And the new value is WI equal to WI minus QI times time step okay so it looks like we are ready to go to the next step because what we did inside the fourth cycle is 
look at rainfall and then update the storage second instruction look at storage compute river flow third instruction look at river flow update the storage so we are ready to go to the next time step but you may have a comment on this because um, actually rainfall river flow and uh, updating of the storage it's a series of processes that are occurring at the same time instead here i wrote them as a sequence so you may write why didn't you subtract river flow before adding rainfall to the storage this could be another solution so i could have inverted the sequence of these instructions like first computation of river flow and then update of the storage by adding rain and subtracting river flow so does it matter the order of the sequence of the instructions that i am giving and given that i i am giving this instruction in a sequence is it providing a good representation of the real process where all of these processes are occurring at the same time good so the answer is this is numerical integration numerical integration always introduces an approximation because uh, numerical integration it is extended over a finite time step in this case one hour while integration should refer to an infinitesimal time step when you pass from uh, the infinitesimal time step to the finite difference then you introduce an error precisely because these processes should occur at the same time while in a time step you are forced to assume that some processes occur at the beginning and other processes occur in the end whatever assumption you make you may put river flow at the beginning of the time step and then storage update at the end of the time step or like i did here i split the storage update at the beginning and end of the time step and i put the river flow the river flow uh, outcome from the catchment in the middle but these are assumptions and i need these assumptions because i am working again on a finite time step again this is the approximation induced by numerical integration the way i am adopting here to compute the numerical integration is the Euler method the Euler method assumes that all the processes are occurring as a sequence whatever is the order of the sequence that you may you are free to decide still you are putting them into a sequence this is the Euler numerical integration method the spelling is E U L E R Euler mm -hmm. It is also linked in my web page where I mentioned the Euler method. It's linked to a Wikipedia page which better explains the Euler method. Better means also in mathematical terms, which is something less understandable of the language that I'm using here. So again, this is an approximation of numerical integration. And, uh, you know, I think it is acceptable in our case, but uh, still it is something that we have to consider in this case in some cases uh, the numerical approximation may lead to instability in this case it will not lead to instability because i am putting some conditions and one conditions one condition is here i am writing now i have to make sure that w is not lower than zero is not less than zero because this would be physically unfeasible physically meaningless 
in do, the numerical approximation may lead me according to the computation scheme that you see on the screen may lead me to get negative values of storage suppose that uh, you uh, because when you subtract the river flow you may end up with a negative storage in the last instruction so i have to write if square parenthesis w e is lower than zero w e equals zero this is a if instruction in only one line good at this stage i think i am fine hmm? i am fine and uh, i can go out of the four cycle what i just need here i may need to write a plot let's write the plot plot q type equal line in order to see what happens if i want to go back <coughs> the river flow as a result of my computation i have to use an instruction return return q and that's it let me save it i am not sure i was completely correct with the script may be that there are mistakes uh, and uh, but i feel it is correct so let's test it by by running it good let me select it let me select it with uh, for instance select tool and then let me source it into the console and you see that uh, by sourcing the script uh, it didn't give it didn't report any warning any error it doesn't mean that it's necessarily correct uh, the second text uh, test is to run it now let me run it i go to the console and then i can write uh, something like like uh, river sim river flow simulated is equal to lin res of what i have to give all the arguments and the arguments are rain data rain river flow data river flow and then runoff coefficient 0.5 and then area 1214 and then k okay what value should I give to K? Uh, let's try with uh, 15,000. Why 15,000? Because I said that K is close to the concentration time of, of the catchment and uh, let's say that a concentration time of the catchment expressed in second it's um, something like uh, something like three hours times uh, 3600 to, to, to get it in seconds i think this is reasonable maybe it's just a first guess let's see what happens first of all it works it works which is uh, because you see the plot it worked the only thing is that the order of magnitude of q is completely meaningless uh, i'm not sure whether this is a mistake or whether this means that i have to increase the value of k and uh, let's try with a k value which is much higher i put one more zero here no here there is something wrong i think let me go back to the script let's go back to the script and see whether the units are correct because when there is something wrong you see that it is too large q it means that probably the units are not correct and uh, let's see if you look at the graph the hydrograph is the shape is becoming quite uh, quite okay or let me just put one more zero just to check no, it's still uh, it's still too large q so let's go back and uh, and let's start from the computation of net rain let's see if everything was okay here 
so it's uh, rain data times area the area is given in in uh, square kilometers the rain data are to be given in millimeters which i think is fine and uh, and then and then it's in millimeters and divided by 1000 yes meters and uh, and then uh, the area is given in square in square kilometers, so you have to multiply it by one million. Okay, I think net rain is fine. I think uh, sorry, Massimiliano, the area input is in meters. No, I think uh, 1214 is square kilometers from the exercise. So I think it's okay. It's okay. I don't think it, 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 it is wrong here. But just let me continue. The storage. The storage is uh, in... Uh, It's hourly rainfall, so hourly rainfall should be multiplied by the millimeters per. I'm not sure. I think the daily rainfall is in millimeters per hour, so it means that if it is millimeters per hour, it's not millimeters per second. Here is the problem. It's net rain. I think net rain. It's in millimeters per hour. And this is uh, something that I have to specify in the input file. I will make these changes. Let, let me let me just take a note. So specify unit of rainfall. Specify unit rainfall. And the change text. Okay. So here we have to make uh, divided by I think in this way it is correct because it is in millimeter per hour and I need to to put it in seconds millimeters per second okay let's see what happens and uh, we have to select all good to source it and then let me write again 15,000 has value of k which is okay now what we are getting is close to reality because uh, you see that 400 for q it's not so bad i mean it's uh, actually if i look at river flow let me get back the plot of river flow if you look at river flow the shape of the hydrograph is different and the max is around 90. if i look at my simulated data the max is 400 which means that uh, I need to change something to get a river flow which is lower and the only thing I can change is K. It is the only thing I can change. And uh, so how should we change it? The reasoning that I'm going to make now is important to understand how the model works. So how I'm going to change it. Now, as I said, K is related to the concentration time of the catchment, hmm? somehow related. Now, actually, I think uh, a catchment of 1,000 square kilometers, more or less, may have a concentration time of uh, 20 hours. This is my guess, basing on experience. But you can... Uh, if you don't have a preliminary guess, you may try to apply roughly Giandotti's formula. I'm not sure whether you know this formula for calculating the concentration time of a catchment. If you don't know it, I just open a Google window and let's search for Giandotti formula. This one is in Italian, it's Wikipedia in Italian, and here 
you can see John Dotti's formula and uh, it is in Italian but you know formulas you can understand it in, in any language and uh, it is an empirical formula and the symbols uh, here it's something that if you are interested please uh, refer to the uh, look at this web page and I think you can find it in English okay now let's go back to our studio as I said my preliminary guess for this catchment is like 20 hours 20 hours times uh, 3600 is uh, 72,000 not 15,000 so let me change this look at the bottom of the screen I am changing to 72,000 before running the program let me make uh, an additional consideration from a physical point of view is it uh, reasonable what I'm doing I mean I need to decrease the river flow because the model is is overestimating it is it reasonable that I adopt a value for k that is much higher in order to decrease the river flow and remember k is close to the time of concentration so which means that I am increasing the time of concentration of the catchment into the model now uh, is it reasonable okay let's let's uh, think at what happens in a catchment when we increase the time of concentration what happens is that uh, we increase the storage if you look at uh, the linear reservoir if you increase k you decrease q and therefore you increase w so in a catchment it means that I am increasing the storage of the catchment as represented by the model now if I increase storage what happens it happens simply that uh, you have part of the rainfall that is stored and therefore you are decreasing the river flow if you increase k you see in on if you see how river flow is computed you decrease the river flow and this is physically meaningful because if you increase storage this is water that is not immediately transformed in river flow which means that if you increase the time of concentration if you increase k you are decreasing the river flow it is sensible I mean it is sensible because this is what I have to do at this stage let's run in the console the new simulation and you see that we got a much more reasonable simulation because now we decreased from 400 to 200 it's still too large which means that uh, let's bring it to 150,000 it's still too large so let's increase again 250 and now we are almost there if you compare this simulation with the plot of the river flow you see we are almost there now you may say can we make a comparison yes of course we can plot the river flow over this simulation color equal red you see they are almost equivalent the way we got there the way we got there is through trial and error some physical reasoning I got a first guess of the concentration time but then I realized that uh, my first guess was still underestimated so I made trial and error in order to get to the final result 
and uh, what we do we did is uh, finding the optimal value for k by trial and error what we did it's called model calibration we will discuss about it later later not today we will discuss about model calibration calibration means to find the optimal way for a model's parameters good any question because our application actually is finished i mean we could embellish the graph we could uh, we could do something more but actually what i wanted to what i wanted to do with you it's uh, what we did there is uh, while you think about possible questions there is uh, an additional consideration that i would like to make this data you may have seen that the files uh, are named with uh, the final part of the name which is synth synth means synthetic these are not real world data the catchment actually is a real world one but these are synthetic data they were generated by using a model why did i that uh, i did that because uh, because uh, um, when you use real world data there is a lot of uncertainty which means that the model is not as good as uh, here in simulating the river flow the simulation that you get usually it's uh, roughly approximated for us because of the presence of uncertainty and so real world data are not a good example for a first modeling experience because uh, you know calibration is it's complicated and uh, and therefore i want to i wanted to I wanted to make this exercise with a simplified uh, approach and the simplified in a simplified context let me say good it's impossible that you don't have any question because there was a lot of food for thought so ask questions one minute you are not obliged but strongly encouraged Okay, no questions. Now, let's move forward then. I think we can save everything here and um, save our script. You may want also to save the environment, the data, and it, it's up to you, but I think we can close our studio. So save workspace image. I am not saving because I don't need the data. I just saved the script, which is what I wanted to save. And then let me get to the large web page, deductive methods. Here we are. Okay. So the linear reservoir has the advantage of, um, as I said, of being uh, analytically tractable in uh, provided the rainfall is, uh, is uh, in itself analytically tractable. But actually the numerical simulation that we did uh, could be applied to any relationship between storage and river flow. The relationship that we assumed for storage and river flow is linear, but actually we can go with any, um, any relationship because uh, in uh, the numerical integration you don't have any limit to flexibility. The only limit is that uh, you have to carefully consider the numerical approximation, which for nonlinear models may be more relevant. 
because linearity is also very robust robust means that you know linearity is an approximation but it's an approximation that uh, doesn't involve usually large mistakes and uh, therefore linearity is also a um, conservative approach within this respect but actually you can go with um, with um, whatever solution you want in principle and therefore people extend the linear reservoir to the non-linear case the non-linear case implies uh, the possibility to establish a non-linear relationship between storage and uh, river flow and discharge but if you look at the at this uh, image here you are also allowed to uh, place uh, your discharge at any level not necessarily at the bottom of the tank which means that uh, if you put even only one discharge here you see three discharges but but uh, even if you put only one but not at the bottom so you have a kind of uh, threshold storage if you don't put it at the bottom basically you activate your river flow only when a threshold storage is needed is reached which means that the relationship between discharge and and storage is not linear anymore because when you put thresholds thresholds are not part of linearity thresholds are part of non-linear approaches also you could put more than one discharge like you can see here which are activated at different levels of storage these are all non-linear additions but actually it is quite easy in a numerical script to include additional discharges or to fix thresholds the only thing you have to be careful because uh, you know fixing thresholds positioning thresholds means that the river flow is suddenly activated suddenly increased this is something that uh, usually we don't see in reality. In reality, when you look at an hydrograph, you don't see like sudden changes. The hydrograph is very smooth. Like, instead, if you make an experiment with the same data set that I gave to you to put thresholds, to put additional discharges, you can do it because it's very simple. You will see that uh, you will notice sudden changes in the shape of the hydrograph which are not realistic you have to be careful because uh, you always have always have to make sure that your model gives uh, results that are physically meaningful okay but we can do that of course and uh, and therefore this is an advantage of numerical integration you have flexibility now uh, this is the non-linear reservoir. Let me make a step forward and uh, to consider another model, which is called IMOD. IMOD is a very simple name acronym, stays for hydrological model or hydrologic model. IMOD is uh, a nice uh, extension of the linear reservoir. It's a non-linear model and uh, but uh, it is really well conceived because as we will see it takes uh, into account within a very simple modeling scheme it takes into account uh, in a more detailed way the physics of the process and uh, let me try to better explain you will see that uh, the mathematical treatment of this model is 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 not that simple it, it's not complicated but it's not it is not as simple as the linear reservoir there is mathematically there is a, quite a complication that we need to introduce on the other hand numerically there is not additional complication i mean the the program the script of the imod model is very self-contained so it's a model that it's uh, 
complicated from the theoretical point of view, but very simple to apply. And uh, this is very nice because we are interested in application. Complication of theory is something that doesn't really concern an engineer, uh, especially if the complication of the theory provides uh, an improvement of uh, the level of detail uh, with which uh, we represent the natural processes. So I mean, uh, it, it, it has a nice feature, the model, provides a better description at the expense of some uh, uh, theoretical complexity, but uh, the application is still very simple. What is the, um, the I mean, what is uh, the level of additional detail that this model introduces? Let me explain it in very simple terms. If you look at a catchment, it is uh, sensible, it is reasonable to, to represent it as a tank, like in the linear reservoir. This is okay, I mean, but um, representing it as a tank means that you are lamping the special variability of the catchment. You are putting everything together. While we know that, for instance, rainfall. Rainfall is, uh, in the linear reservoir, we need to refer to mean area rainfall. We cannot represent the spatial variability. And, uh, okay, this is one thing. But look, for instance, at the storage, which is the feature I am particularly interested in now. When you refer to the linear reservoir, you have a a unique value for storage of the catchment, which means that two catchment, two catchments with the same area and uh, the same uh, K and the same storage are equivalent. But what if the same storage is distributed into the catchment in a different way? Some catchments may have more storage within the closure and less storage in the upper part because you know mountains usually don't store much water but if you go for instance in England everything is flat storage is uh, more uniformly distributed and uh, the linear reservoir doesn't allow you by by a lamp by lamping all together by putting all together doesn't allow you to represent the spatial variability of storage it just gives a value for storage and at each time step, but it doesn't tell you where this storage is located at each time step. This is a strong limitation. I mean, we are neglecting spatial variability of rainfall and we are neglecting in the linear reservoir spatial variability of storage, which is, uh, as I said, a significant limitation. The IMOD model removes this latter limitation it still considers the catchment as a unique entity, so rainfall is still assumed to be uniformly distributed, but it allows the IMOD model to take into account spatial variability of storage within a lamped approach. So it is still the catchment considered as a unique entity, but spatial variability is considered. This was a brilliant idea. And the way it is considered is through a statistical approach. And then I, uh, I will describe what was the concept of the idea after the break, because uh, I think it's better if we make the break now. Okay, very good. So, just to make sure, if you can please write on the chat if you can hear me. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so the IMOD model. This model was proposed in 2000 and uh, 
it is based uh, on a fundamental assumption so let me say it is not easy to explain it in person because it is it's a simple concept once you understood it but uh, to actually to understand it it's it's uh, it requires some uh, careful consideration so i'm doing my best uh, in uh, virtually and uh, there is a first assumption which is the basic assumption i am highlighting it the assumption is that each point location i in a catchment or basin is uh, characterized by a local value of soil water storage which we call here ci so again this is the basic concept you have a different soil water storage in each location of the catchment what is soil water storage? It's also called the water storage capacity of the soil. It is the depth of water that the soil can retain before becoming saturated. Which means that if it rains over there and the storage is CI, if it rains a quantity that is lower than CI, it is infiltrated, retained by the soil. Above CI, the water, the rainfall, flows over the ground. It's not retained and therefore flows down. Okay, And this water storage changes in each location of the catchment. What is the variability of soil water storage? varies from zero and it's zero in the impervious areas what does it mean impervious it means that it's not permeable and impervious is a road is a roof of an house it's a, a paved soil this is impervious no infiltration what is the max of ci of storage it is uh, a max value in the catchment whatever it is which is called c max and it is located c max in the most permeable location let's say or in the, the most storing location of the catchment now it is not the purpose of the model to describe ci in each point of the catchment the purpose of the model is to describe it statistically so ci is assumed to be randomly varying okay i'm not interested in knowing where are the points with a given ci i am interested in knowing what is the fraction of the catchment that has ci values before a given value so let's say if i say that i am interested in knowing the areas where storage is less than 100 millimeters okay i am interested in the areas where storage is less than 100 millimeters but i am not interested in knowing where these areas are my purpose in the imod model is to describe what is the fraction of the catchment that has storage lower than 100 millimeters it may be half of the catchment one third of the catchment this is what i want to describe with this model okay so ci is assumed to be randomly varying and then i need to introduce to get the statistical description that i mentioned to you and i am selecting on the screen a probability distribution A probability distribution that gives the probability that a randomly selected location j in the catchment has a gj less than or equal to a given value c star okay and why probability why a probability distribution because uh, we already said that probability is like frequency. Mm? 
So if I say that, uh, for instance, uh, C star is again 100 millimeters, I am interested in knowing the probability that a randomly selected location has a CJ less than or equal to C star. This probability, I can interpret it as a frequency and then precisely has the fraction of the catchment that has a CJ less than C star. Probability equals the fraction of the catchment that has a CJ less than or equal to C star. So this is why I want a probability because before than that, I said I am interested in the fraction of the catchment that has uh, infiltration, that has storage below a certain threshold. Now I turn fraction of the catchment into probability because it is the same thing. Okay. In fact, you see here, I am selecting. Just wait and you will see the selection on the screen. Such probability may be interpreted as the fraction half C star. It's a function of C star of the catchment area where CJ is less than or equal to C star. Okay, so I provided the motivation why to describe the fraction of the catchment that has a certain storage, why I need a probability distribution that a randomly selected location has a storage which is below the given threshold. Fraction translates into probability distribution. And then it turns out that in order to apply this model, I need to introduce such probability distribution, which is given here. And uh, let's uh, have a look at this relationship. So first of all, this is uh, a probability distribution. I assume that uh, you know what a probability distribution is. We already discussed about uh, a little bit about probability, I just said it's like a frequency. The probability distribution is an analytical relationship that describes probability. And in particular, here, uh, it, uh, in general, it varies from 0 and 1. So f should vary between 0 and 1, because it's probability that is varying in the range 0, 1. So necessarily, f describes a probability and therefore it needs to vary between 0 and 1. Fine. And uh, in particular here, half is a function of C star. Remember C star is a given storage. So I want to know the fraction of the catchment that has a storage less than or equal to 100. Okay, C star is my 100. It's a given storage C star. And then the probability distribution is a function of C star. And it's written as, you can see here, 1 minus, open parenthesis, 1 minus C star divided by C max to the power of beta k. And here, again, C star is varying between 0 and C max. Is this function varying between 0 and 1? OK, let's see. Uh, if C star is equal to zero, what is the value of the function? The value of the function is one minus, uh, one, minus one, because one to the power of beta k is one. So one minus one, zero. Perfect. And uh, what if, uh, what if uh, C star is equal to C max? Then between parentheses, between parentheses, I have 1 minus 1, 0, 0 to the power of beta k is 0, fc star is 1. So it is indeed varying between 0 and 1. It is interesting to study 
what is the shape of this function let me open in order to to study the shape of this function let's open our studio and write an R script it would be easier to make it in excel but given that we have to learn R let's do it in R studio and uh, let's fix a value of beta k variable okay beta k let's treat it as a parameter uh, cmax we can fix it and then let's see what is the shape so let me open R studio again okay and let me write with a script a function let me see um, let me write with a script a function that uh, draws up the plot of uh, the probability distribution of i mode so let me open another script it is this one and let me clean the console let me also clean the global environment I click on the broom here yes perfect now let's write this script and let's write high mod equal function if you have any problem write on the chat please high mod function so I need to define beta and uh, cmax but cmax uh, let's write 100 whatever whatever it is it's not a problem for us and I think this is everything I need. Let me open the curly bracket. Good. And now we need to um, define a vector for C star. So C star equal, let's say, sequence, sequence from 0 to C max 0.1. Okay. This is my C star. And now F c star this is equal to f c star is one minus open parenthesis oops sorry one minus open parenthesis one minus uh, c star divided c max and then to the power of beta i think this should work let me see uh, actually something is missing because if you go back to the uh, to the relationship that you can see here you see that something is missing so let me write what is missing and then one minus i think this should be correct and then we can write the plot of C star F C star type equal line good I think uh, that's it let's try to select all source and then let's try to write this plot i mod so let's put beta equal one this is the plot actually uh, actually um, let me see there is something which is not uh, correct just one second i think let me look at here yeah one minus c star divided c max there is a there is something uh, yeah this is correct there was a one that was um, in excess actually I think we can eliminate this round parenthesis now should work perfectly we will see select all source and then I mod one okay now it's okay so you see that C star is varying from 0 to 100 and uh, and then F C star is varying from 0 to 1 this is precisely what we wanted to obtain but beta is equal 1 what happens if beta increases so let's uh, put I mod 10 okay this is what happens if beta increases which means uh, 
that uh, we get a curve uh, with uh, convexity which is uh, looking uh, uh, downward so it, it's a concave curve let's see imod 3 again it's concave so increasing beta is flattening the curve against uh, the upper value of fc star good what happens if beta is less than 1 0.5 okay now it's a convex curve if beta is zero, very close to 0 I am flattening the curve to the x-axis axis. what does this mean from a physical point of view remember what is fc star so let me clean the console and uh, let's look at this plot what does this mean okay it means that fc star is uh, equal to zero in this plot for any value of c star but 100 what is fc star remember it's the fraction of the catchment that has a storage which is less than or equal to C star. So what does this mean that this fraction is zero even for increasing C star? It means that, for instance, if I look at C star equal to 100, the fraction of the catchment that has less than or equal storage to 100 is zero it means that uh, it means that every part of the catchment has uh, more than the considered C star which means that uh, every part of the catchment has uh, a storage capacity which is equal to the max so the catchment has everywhere a storage then that is equal to C star 100 in this case conversely if we get I mod 1000 we see the opposite situation the catchment is impervious meaning that uh, the fraction of the catchment that has uh, a storage less than or equal than C star is zero. Sorry, I think uh, I let me think uh, if it is uh, it is uh, the opposite reasoning that I should make. Uh, if the fraction is zero for any value of C star, uh, the fraction is zero of the catchment that has less or than or equal to 100. It means that everything has a uniform distribution of 100 everywhere so for increasing beta we should get uh, we should get a uniform distribution of storage 100 and uh, for decreasing beta we get impervious catchment okay let's let's uh, look at the web page where these considerations are written so one can easily verify by numerical simulation that beta k was equal to zero implies that the soil water storage is constant over the basin and equal to c max actually i think uh, that uh, this is uh, uh, this is the reasoning my first reasoning which was correct beta k equal one implies that the soil water storage is linearly varying from zero to c max beta k tending to infinity is equivalent to impervious catchment so actually my first reasoning was correct it is important that you get this so it is important that you get the assimilation between probability distribution and uh, and the fraction of the catchment with a given storage it's important that you get the fact that uh, with varying beta k 
we vary how storage is varying over the catchment it's important that you get uh, by your individual reasoning that you you should make as a homework it's important that you get that beta k equals zero implies constant storage equal to c max beta k infinity implies that uh, the soil water storage is tending to the null value and therefore the catchment is imp impervious good so this is the first thing that i wanted to concentrate on and uh, the numerical simulation helps you in this respect good now let's turn into the next consideration let's assume that a storm event occurs over the basin and let us define with the symbol ct time varying the time varying water depth stored in the unsaturated location of the catchment this is another thing that you have to make clear in your mind so ct is a time varying quantity what is ct it's uh, the water depth that uh, is stored in the unsaturated location of the catchment mm -hmm. actually and i'm passing to the next line if we ignore any water losses like evapotranspiration ct is equal to the rainfall amount from the beginning of the event which in the future we will indicate with the symbol pt pt for rainfall okay so when we say that ct is the water depth stored in the unsaturated locations it means that uh, it is equivalent to the rainfall amount from the beginning of the event because in the unsaturated location everything that rains is stored as i said of course we have to ignore evapotranspiration to equate water storage with precipitation we need to ignore evapotranspiration and any other loss perfect now if we go back to our previous relationship f c star and we substitute c star with c t then this same relationship will describe the probability distribution of saturated area into the catchment because uh, you know uh, c star it's a given water storage so we said the c star is varying between zero and c max if we equate c star with ct which is the water stored in the unsaturated area then we get the fraction of the catchment which uh, is uh, which is uh, unsaturated mm. okay so uh, sorry which is saturated because we get the fraction of the area which is a storage which is less than or equal to rainfall and therefore fc star if we substitute c star with ct gives us the fraction of the catchment that is saturated because if it rained ct and we get the fraction of the catchment with the storage which is lower than rainfall it means that rainfall saturated that fraction perfect okay and uh, such distribution now expressed in terms of ct it is reported here this is a, just an example don't look at the shaded areas at the colored areas for now let's look at just this example red line of uh, fc and uh, now let's focus on it by assuming that we got uh, what i just said meaning that if we get a value a given value of uh, ct look at the the figure and i may open it just one second i may open it in a graphical 
the graphic program so I can draw on it. Let me enlarge it, very good. And then let me get a blue color and a brush. Okay, good. So let's look at CT here. We start from here. This is a given value. At a certain time, we are neglecting evapotranspiration. And then we have a cumulative rainfall from the beginning of the event, which is CT. Okay, and the CT, it is equivalent to the amount of water that is stored in the unsaturated areas. Good. If we go up to the curve, to the red curve, good, we get here. And then we go to the y-axis, to the vertical axis. What do we get? We get FCT, which is the fraction of the catchment that has a storage that is lower than or equal to rainfall from the beginning of the event. So this is the fraction of the catchment that is saturated. Very good. Now let's move forward one time step, for instance, one hour. We get uh, some additional rainfall and then we get to CT plus DT and then we go up to the curve and then we go left to the new fraction of saturated area so what is uh, this difference here just one second this difference which i am sorry which i am highlighting now this one this difference hmm? precisely this segment here this is uh, rainfall that fell into the time step between ct and ct plus dt so this is rainfall now what is this segment here again in red what is this segment This segment is precisely the increase of saturated area that corresponds to T and T plus DT. So let me write it here. This is increase too large. Let me write 15. Oh, this is increase sorry increase of saturated area so it, it's uh, it's an area now what is this gray area hmm? okay if we assume that the increment of time is very small this area is precisely it is precisely the product of uh, of uh, um, or let, 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 let me say what is this area here one second here what is this this area here this is uh, precisely the product between, uh, of uh, rainfall between T and T plus DT and uh, increase of uh, saturated area. Okay, so basically this uh, uh, additional area I should also write here. The, this blue area here corresponds to uh, an increase of volume of storage because uh, basically here what, what you get uh, is uh, 
the area of this uh, let's say that it's a rectangle this blue one it's a rectangle it's a rectangle which is whose area is given by fraction of uh, of uh, unsaturated area times uh, increase of rainfall and therefore this is rainfall that uh, is multiplied by the unsaturated area it's storage now let's look at the gray at the gray area the gray area let's assimilate it to a rectangle because uh, it's uh, an inf infinitesimal increase of time the gray area is rainfall times times saturated area increase of rainfall from t and t plus the t times saturated area so this is rainfall that fell over an area that is already saturated so it's a contribution to runoff and the blue area is the complement it's a rainfall which fell over the unsaturated catchment and therefore is contribution to storage so what is the moral of the story the moral of the story is that if i integrate the red curve from zero to t plus the t what i get is this area here let me give it another color this one plus this one plus this one this is the integral of the red curve between zero and t plus the t this integral is runoff from the beginning of the event the complement to one of this area which is uh, this one let me give another color just one second okay this is storage which means that if i integrate this red curve from zero to a given rainfall value ct i get the river flow and look uh, when i talk uh, about these areas you see that uh, these areas are the multiplication of rainfall times a fraction actually this fraction is fraction of area of the catchment so if i want to get uh, the river flow per unit area of the catchment i just uh, have to multiply rainfall times the fraction but in this case i am getting river flow per unit area if i want to get the net value of the river flow then i have to uh, multiply the rainfall times fraction times area so it is extremely important that you keep into account that we are in i mode we are talking about fractions of area so it's a dimensionless quantity which uh, uh, it is actually equivalent to uh, an area but to get an area you to get the area you have to multiply the fraction times the area of the catchment so this is uh, the reasoning behind the model i need a probability distribution of uh, soil water storage and once i integrate the probability distribution over a uh, given value of rainfall at each time step i get the total contribution to runoff from the beginning of the event and the total contribution to storage and it is interesting if you go back to my website it is interesting to look at this animated figure probably i'm not sure you see the animation just one second i think you should see it with some delay this animation tells you how runoff and storage increase along the event 
for rainfall values, cumulative rainfall values from zero to C max. And of course, the next question is what if after reaching C max, I still have additional rainfall? And it is explained in the last part of this animation. I got a small break, so I repeat what I just said. Uh, it is interesting to wonder what happens if uh, uh, after rainfall reached C max, uh, cumulative rainfall from the beginning of the event reached C max, what happens if we get additional rainfall? And the explanation is given at the end of the animation, and I'm now with a yellow rectangle, um, I'm now telling you with more details what this yellow rect rectangle means. It is important that uh, you get how it works uh, and uh, through this animated figure how storage and uh, surface runoff progress. Actually what you can see is that at the beginning storage is, uh, is exceeding surface runoff which is physically meaningful and uh, if the curve is, uh, is um, convex, after some time uh, you get that uh, the contribution to runoff is exceeding the contribution to storage, which is again physically meaningful. And uh, this tells us that um, it is indeed uh, advisable that beta k has uh, a value that is lower than one. If you go back to our studio, just one second, and uh, you remember that you get, uh, just one second, uh, two. Actually, actually, let me see. Yeah, uh, I, I was saying uh, it's better if you get uh, a beta value higher than one, sorry, not lower, higher than one. Okay. So let me go back to this animation. It is better if you get a convex curve because uh, it is uh, physically meaningful. As I said, that at the beginning you have more, more storage than runoff and then after a while runoff exceeds uh, the storage. Now, I, as I said, and this is my final consideration, let me see if you have any question. I need to look at the chat, not yet. And uh, a final consideration, as I said, is related to what happens when you get to um, rainfall, cumulative rainfall value that is uh, equal to C max, max storage in the catchment. At this time, you get the catchment completely saturated, which means that any additional rainfall is completely converted into, into runoff. And this explains why you get at the end of the animation this yellow rectangle in the right part of the graph, which is just rainfall times one. The area, which is additional runoff, is rainfall times one because the catchment is completely saturated. Okay, very good. And uh, and then then now let's go to introduce the next step which we will develop next time actually i i like the fact that the concept is introduced in the previous lecture with respect to the analytical treatment because I want to make sure that you got the concept and uh, I'm not sure if you could get it because uh, it, it's, uh, it's more difficult to explain it virtually than, than uh, face to face but uh, I just would like on Monday that we make, um, uh, we make uh, an assessment of your understanding so if you got it then uh, we are ready to move forward and uh, but i just wanted to introduce the next step which is uh, 
you understood well that in order to compute river flow which is surface runoff which is uh, excess of infiltration you understood that we need to compute the integral of this relationship here and this is what we will do next time we need to compute of the integral of the relationship that in a second you will see over the screen this one so we need to compute the integral of this which is quite an easy integral and uh, this is the nice feature of this of this um, of this um, model it is uh, quite easy to compute integral but again uh, i think we need to postpone this to the next time because our time is out very good uh, just let me know if you have